welcome, welcome, come on in, uh, take a seat. So this week I'm going to be carrying on with the Peugeot 205 um, diorama commission that I was revealing last week and we're going to be showing the process of actually turning the car into the car in the reference photo. So to begin with we're going to look at the process of me airbrushing. So you can see me getting out the airbrush and setting it up. I've got my airbrush thinner here which I use to kind of prime the cup on the top so I'll drop a few bits in um, follow that up with my colour which in this case is white um, and so I drop a few uh, drops in there you don't want a hell of a lot but because it will go a long way you then I like to um, just kind of put the paint through the airbrush and get it working and I put my finger over the end generally to um, mix the paint in the cup and um, eventually you get to a point where you're ready to paint now painting for me with the airbrush is um, it's become quite simple now but um, it's not something that you pick up straight away so um, a lot of experience I think all experiences are needed to um, be able to end up doing a good job so here I've got quite confident now to the point where I can jump in on this and ensure that the coat is going to be really quite smooth um, but I have had times when you know you get little bubbles or you get too much um, airbrush thinner in the paint and it goes a bit watery you get too close that can happen um, you know generally you want to be a good six inches away uh, maybe a bit more um, but yeah I I absolutely love it when it's going well I love it but when it's going wrong you kind of want to throw it out the window generally I uh, it's, it's fantastic um, but you can see me here using my turntable um, to, uh, to turn the pieces round and get to every angle really um, you can see how far I'm staying away from the model um, and eventually um, I put a gloss coat um, mixed in with the white which meant that I didn't go completely glossed but um, you know it was just enough to give that sort of realistic scale finish in 124 scale so once we've completed the airbrushing um, let it dry obviously um, you know make you ensure that it's to it's covered the grey primer usually I'd use white but I would run out so um, grey was the method um, and then I brought it in the house to dry um, and you know use that warmth for uh, the house to get it, the finish being quite smooth um, I did the figures as well with a, a red um, next stage literally is uh, the decals now this is a process I haven't covered before I don't think um, on here um, I use a use literally water slide transfer paper um, from Amazon and um, yeah and I print my own decals off Microsoft Word um, and as you can see you know I think they can come out pretty well but um, if this is something you want me to cover a bit more then let me know in the comments because uh, I do quite enjoy doing this and uh, the results are quite rewarding um, especially when you stand back and compare them uh, with the reference photo um, that you're working alongside you can see you know, I haven't put the windows in yet but I started to put the pieces back together on the car as well um, and then, uh, then I've been in and painted the, the roll cage um, and also added like seat belts here and those sort of details um, just so I could start to actually put the car together because the next stage is going to be actually making the diorama itself so using five millimeter thick foam board I put three layers together um, obviously cut each one out with, a, with my trusty Stanley knife just to make sure they're all smooth I put some uh, wire through uh, the car and holes in the base just to to hold it down and uh, and then I started to draw on the kind of template of 
and I'm going to go for at the corner or the junction as it actually is. Um, and here you can see, yeah, I started to cut out a bit of a ditch where the, one of the wheels goes into on the edge. I'm trying to replicate that reference photo at all times. And you can see the thickness there, it's sort of built up, um, which I like to surround with um, black acrylic, black plastic card, uh, which I cut to shape, and that always finishes off really nicely, um, as you can see. So I've got my shaping ready, and uh, I'm quite happy with that. Then built the corner up, that was uh, quite simple. 5mm foam again just to get that embankment you know ready to take the filler textures so basically this is filler and cement as well as some gravel textures um, all mixed together in the uh, in my trusty pot here um, put a bit of PVA glue in as well uh, clear PVA glue actually and um, yeah, it came out quite a nice texture, but um, basically this will be primed um, and then I will go in with the airbrush on all of this um, to get those gravelly textures there and then do a bit of dry brushing, you know, the, uh, the usual kind of things that I like to do. Now it's dry, this was a day later, you can see how the water's evaporated and left all the granules in position so that's really nice I've added some static grass tufts actually that I made in a recent video so if you want to check that out go and see how I did that um, all in all really really good so far you know next week we'll be starting to do something I haven't done before which will be creating the grass in a slightly different way. I won't be using static grass, let's say, um, but that's something that I think I'll um, cover um, in the next video and hopefully show you some well, how I go about it. But thank you for watching so far. I hope you at least you know picked up kind of an idea of how I do these things. And um, subscribe, like if you want to, and um, I'll see you next week. Oh,